Hi, I'm Wendy DeLeon and I'm a member of Teens in Action. Welcome to our show. Our guest host for the show is Keenan. Hi, my name is Keenan Culler and Teens in Action is a show that's produced by teens for teens with topics that are important to us. In this show, we focus on issues related to sex. We uncover the real facts, the extreme risks, and where you can go to get help when you need it. Now, we want to know what you think, so we sent our Teens in Action reporters around the city to ask teens what they think and to get the reaction to some shocking statistics. What is safe sex? It's basically um, sex with protection. Abstinence. Use protection. Using condoms and protectives. And sex where you use a condom. You're using a condom. You want to wear a condom. Using a condom. Not having sex at all, how's that for safe sex? But, you know, if you can't help yourself, use a condom. <laughs> do it with someone you know. Don't do it, and wear a condom if you are. Use birth control. What is the average age when teens experiment with sex? I'd say 16. 16. He's 16. I'd say 13. 16. 14. <laughs> I'd say 16. See, 14. 16. 14. When you're 16, usually? 14. 14. 14. 15. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about 14, 16. I would say 14. I would say be 16 years old. How many teens in the United States get sexually transmitted diseases per year? 60,000. I'm guessing 10,000. 10,000. 11,000. 2 million? B, 60,000. 2 million? 2 million. Like 10,000? 60,000? Um, 15 million? D. A, 10,000. 15 million. 2 million? How do guys and girls view sex differently? Guys like it and girls are scared of it. <laughs> girls view it as much more important, more significant type thing and guys just do it just to do it. I guess boys see it more for fun. I guess girls see it as a way of love. I think mean, guys view it more as like a fun thing. Girls have this more emotional attachment to it. Guys usually think it's okay to do it, but girls sometimes are more like reserved about it. Girls take it more seriously than guys do. Guys think it's like just for fun or whatever, and girls take it all serious and stuff, yeah. We went out and asked 100 teens these questions. Have you been pressured to have sex? Here are the results. Then we asked, at your age, is sex important? And the results are... Hi, I'm Rachel, and today I'm here with Tony, Ashton, Arby, and Hernan to talk about teens and how they deal with pressures in society. So my question is to you, why do teens feel pressure to have sex? I think, I don't know, maybe if someone has friends that have had sex, then maybe they want to fit in. They get pressure from their friends, you know, because sometimes they talk, they talk um, about sex and they don't want to be left out, you know, they, I guess they want to have experience, or not experience, you know, but they, they want to fit in with what they're talking about. I agree that the pressure does come from your friends, especially, I think, for the boys. They have to prove their, you know, masculinity, and also, like, homosexuality comes into play also. They have to prove themselves to their friends. I think that with sex, they can prove that. I think the media also comes into play because there are a lot of people, like, having children maybe before marriage. And I guess people are more, like, aware of it. And it's being publicized more. So they think it's more acceptable and easier to do. I also think that having older siblings helps for people to think that they need to be more experienced to live up to their older brother or sister's expectations. On that same note, why do you think some girls use sex to get attention? Girls, I guess maybe they don't feel, like they feel, oh, someone cares about me or something, or um, maybe they're in competition with other girls. If they sleep with someone, then, you know, probably that gains in friends, gains in popularity. I also think sometimes maybe um, they'll have sex with the guy just to keep him from, you know, going to someone else. So. Why, do you, why do you guys think sex makes them cool? Well, um, sex, I think guys think sex makes them cool because 
they could be around, they could be uh, telling everyone, oh yeah, I've had sex with some like certain girl and some other girl, and they could be like, oh yeah, I have experience. Yeah, I agree with Hernan. I think, you know, it can be like, you know, yeah, I've had sex before, and, and just kind of brag about it. Thank you, Tony, and thank you everyone for sharing your opinion on this topic. I hope this helps you share your opinion. Thank you. Did you know? Sexual feelings can be pretty strong. What do you need to think about before you act on those feelings? Stay tuned and find out. I know what you're looking for. When you look down at your shoes, to the door. Look anywhere but in my eyes. You're looking for an excuse. Una excusa. Some lame. No good. Irresponsible. Mad talking. Excuse for fooling around. For doing it without using protection. Now what was your excuse? Uh, uh, uh well. <laughs> I've heard that one before. For more information about HIV AIDS, call toll-free 1-866-344-NO. So, you know that sexual feelings can be pretty strong. Here's what you need to think about before you act on those feelings. Ask yourself these questions. Is having sex in agreement with my own moral values? Am I sure no one is pushing me into having sex? Can I handle being a single parent or placing my child up for adoption? Am I absolutely sure my partner is not infected with an STD? Welcome back to Teens in Action. When teens talk about pregnancy, they think, it won't happen to me. But the truth is, it happens. In our next segment, we talk with a young couple who got pregnant at 16, even though they use birth control. In the United States, over one million teenage girls become pregnant every year. How did your life change when you found out you were pregnant? It changed a lot because at that time I was going to school, well, I was going towards graduation and at that time I was pregnant, I had to go to doctor's appointments and everything and I was getting ready to graduate right when I got pregnant. It was hard, it was real hard, I was, I was scared, you know, it just, things weren't the same anymore, my body was changing, everything was different. changed a lot because like I don't know what to expect or what, what was I gonna do and how was I gonna raise them. How did your parents react to the situation when they found out? My mom she was kind of scared as well. Your life is gonna change. She told me the same thing you know how about your dreams how about all that stuff but even though she supported me at all times so I'm thankful for that. Oh, uh, well my mom, you know, she said that I was too young and I didn't finish school. On the other hand, my dad, he told me, oh, you know, you gotta get a job and support your baby, you know, because, you know, it's gonna be a big responsibility, you know. You weren't able to finish high school at all? No, I graduated from high school, but, yeah, I had to put up with a lot, you know. No, I didn't, I didn't finish high school. I dropped out because, like, I was cutting classes just to go to work. I attended Monterey High School, and there I had um, parenting classes, and they, that helped me a lot, because I towards that I learned of what pretty much pregnancy was, and I didn't know I was only 16 at that time when I got pregnant. So, it uh, helped me a lot. Did you regret not finishing high school? Yeah, because the job that I got is like not what I wanted. What type of job do you have now? Right now I'm a hostess. Construction and just working under the sun so it's not a good thing. Well, it's not what I wanted to be, but at least, you know, something that's bringing in more money. The one that pays me more. What is your typical day like? My typical day is getting up at 5 o'clock in the morning, getting my son ready, you know, for him to stay with my mom that day. Well, I go to work early in the morning and I don't get to see him like later in the evening. I have to be out out of the house by 8. I don't go into work until 10 o'clock, but I have to catch the bus, you know, have to walk a little. So I have to get up very early, you know, get them ready. I come from work and I'm all stressed out and just when I get home it's a whole different like world. When I come home, you know, there's things to do around the house. So I have to clean, get them ready. How has your friendships changed? I mean, has it changed since 
Oh yes, a lot. My friends that don't have babies, you know, they want to go out and I can't, I can't just get up and leave, you know, anytime I want to have my responsibilities now. It's, I hardly have any money for myself. Everything goes to my son for his diapers or his clothes. Right? And nothing works out the same anymore, you know. If you had advice for teens today, what would that be? Definitely to use protection. And I would just probably tell them, you know, to hold on to sex, you know, it's a big deal. It's not just, you know, laying down. If they're in a serious relationship, they really have to think about it twice. Finishing school and everything, that's something that you're going to have for the rest of your life. Thank you, Maria and David, for coming, sharing your experience with us. I hope other teens benefit from your story. I hope someone, you know, out there listens. Our next teen survey question was, have you had sex? We also asked, if you have had a sexual experience, did you use protection? Hi, I'm Jonathan, and I'm here with Brittany, Melissa, Jared, and Daniel to talk about consequences teens don't consider that could change their lives forever. How would having a child change your lives? I think having a child would change your life because you would have to drop out of school to take care of him, and you would probably not get a good job, so it affects you a lot. You have to uh, put him first before you and put him before everything else that you do. Uh, you'd have to give up education, your social life, and you'd have to spend most of, most of your time um, taking care of your kid. It just is hard. Well, two of my dad's sisters had babies when they were 14 and 15. And once they had the kids, they lost the rest of their childhood. And rather than, I mean, they had to drop out of school and not hang out with the rest of their friends. Sometimes they would have to get up at like 4 o'clock in the morning to tend to the kids crying. And when they were crying, they wouldn't know how to handle it and stuff. So just a lot of things. You guys all make a very good point. Have you guys thought about what you guys would have to give up to um, take care of the baby? I think you would have to give up a lot of stuff, like maybe your career, you would want to, like if you wanted to be something when you were small and then you have a baby, you would have to think about like the baby now and you would have to give up that career and find a different job. You'd have to give up your sleep because um, they cry like a lot and then you'd have to be awake to uh, take care of them. I think that you'd have to give up pretty much what you regularly do in your regular life because uh, having a kid would change your life completely. Well, you'd have to give up stuff that you'd have later in life, like if there was someone that you were going out with, and I mean, when you got older, like in your 20s, and you wanted to marry them, you might have to give up marrying them. They'd have to deal with something that wasn't even their own and all their issues from when they were younger. Thank you guys for being a part of this discussion. We hope you remember the sacrifices and responsibilities that you will have to go through by raising a child. Did you know? It costs about $791 per month or $9,500 per year to take care of a baby. On average, how much child support does a teen mother receive from the baby's father per year? Stay tuned and find out. 20 million young lives thrown away. That's how many could contract HIV worldwide in the next few years. But it doesn't have to be like that. HIV is preventable. Go to knowhivaids.org. So you know it costs about $9,500 per year to care for a baby, but the average support a teen mother receives from a baby's father is only $800 per year. Unfortunately, 80% of teen mothers eventually go on welfare. Welcome back to Teens in Action. We know that sometimes it's hard for kids and their parents to talk about sex. So we went out and asked teens, where do you get your information? Can you talk to your parents about sex? I feel that I can because we have a special bond, but there's a limit. Yeah, definitely. It depends if they bring the subject up first. Of course. No. Sometimes. Sure, no problem. Yeah. No. <laughs> Why is that? Because they're religious and they're from 
a different country, you know, so I really can't talk to them about it. Can't be really open about it because they're not really um, adjusted to the American culture and how they, it is, you know. So yeah, I really can't. Not really. I feel uncomfortable when I'm doing it. Yeah. Yes, I can. Yeah, you can talk to your parents about sex. I'm not sure I want to bring up sex around the dinner table or anything. If you were a parent, how will you talk to your kids about sex? I'll let them know all the consequences that come along with having sex. I would only talk to them about it if they asked me about it. Just tell them, like, just, like, to be safe and uh, just that they can talk to me about, like, anything. Sure, because sex is really important, you know. If you, without sex, none of us would be here. I think they could figure it out for themselves. I would tell them to do it when they get married. I would bring up the subject more often just to see if my kid's having sex. But if they do, I'll put them on house arrest. Where do you go if you need information about sex-related topics? To like Google, <laughs> sex, you know. I'm currently taking health. <laughs> Me too. Well, the guidance counselors always say, if there's no one around to help you, just go to the health clinic. I would ask. Um, people with experience, teachers, anyone. I'd rather talk to my friends. Uh, I'm sure you go to the internet somewhere. I think I would go to my public library. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't really look into it much. I took health and guidance in my ninth grade class, so um, I got information from there and just like asking around just my friends and stuff. Probably with my older friends or my sister. I would go to my teachers, because they know a lot, or my parents. I don't know, you could always ask your parents too, but I think that's kind of uncomfortable. Next on our survey we asked, is it okay to have sex just to have sex? Then we wanted to know, should you be in a serious relationship before you have sex? Wendy and I'm here with Gabby, Kim, and Jason to talk about the realities of STDs. So do you guys think that teenagers really understand how STDs can affect their lives? I don't think teens really know and aren't aware that it can happen to them, which is why they go out doing unresponsible things in life. Abstinence is the only protection. Do you think that people think about the physical consequences and how that affects their lives? If we saw uh, the consequences real life and maybe we would think about it better about you know thinking about before having sex and getting with someone with an STD. Like I said earlier all the teens learn about them but they don't take it into consideration that can happen to them so yeah they know it can happen but people don't know a lot of people with STDs so they see it around but I don't think that they're fully aware of what it's really like. As for the physical consequences of STDs, I don't think that's something um, a teenager or any person is really going to think about, for example, in a relationship or with another person. It's just something that you don't directly go to. You're thinking about other things and you're really not thinking about an STD or how it may affect your health or affect your life in certain ways. Do you think like protection is important? I think the number one issue in a teenage relationship is, oh dang, am I going to get pregnant or not? That's why I'm using a condom or that's why I'm using birth control. And many teens may think, oh, I'm on birth control, so I don't have to worry about anything. But in reality, you have to worry about STDs. And I don't think that's the number one concern on people minds when they're in a sexual relationship. I think the number one concern in a teenager's mind is pregnancy. What is the um, emotional reality of dealing with a sexually transmitted disease? I think that kids or teens these days won't realize the true consequence and the guiltiness of what's happened until they got it. So people these days really need to think before they act. I'd have to agree with that as well. Um, if you had AIDS, you'd also feel for yourself, but you would also feel for the people around you. and and your mate and having to jeopardize their life with uh, AIDS. I think emotionally having an STD is an extremely stressful situation to the person who has it. It's taxing on yourself and on other people and other people you are in a relationship with and there's so many things you have to worry about, physical and emotional, and it's just something that's extremely difficult to deal with. Well, thank you everybody for being here today and sharing your opinions and we hope you realize the risks of not protecting yourself. Did you know? Sexually transmitted diseases are at epidemic levels. 
Can you get an infection by just kissing? Stay tuned and find out. If you knew about the person who slept with the person, who slept with the person, who slept with the person, who slept with, well, you'd never go without protection again. For more about HIV AIDS, call toll free, 1-866-344-NO. So you know that sexually transmitted diseases are at epidemic levels. But can you really get an infection just by kissing? Yes. Some infections that are passed on by kissing are herpes, syphilis, and hepatitis B. When teens think about the risks of sex, everyone thinks about pregnancy. But the scary truth is that 41,000 teens and college students can track STDs every day. Next, the Teens in Action crew asked the experts about the realities of STDs. Burbank, there are many places for young people to find information and to get help if they need it. Today, we're going to have a panel discussion on STDs. Our panelists are Reve Carrillo from Valley Teen Clinic and our family physician, Dr. Newman. Welcome. I'm going to start with the first question. Could you have an STD and not know about it? Yes, of course you can have an STD and not know about it because many STDs cause no symptoms of all, at all, especially in women. There's also STDs in men that also do not cause symptoms. Teens and people are, continue to have sexual intercourse and contact with each other and continue to pass the disease back and forth without even knowing it. What is the most common question asked at the clinic? The most common question asked at the clinic is, does the pap smear? hurt and because the first initial visits they have to get a pap smear and I usually make them feel very comfortable and I advise them that most teens feel uncomfortable not necessarily hurt. What is the most common reason why teens come to the clinic? To make sure that they are preventing pregnancy and they are making a difference. Why are clinics important to teens health? Um, it's actually the patient, if you think about it, it's the patient's first really medical decision they have to make by themselves. There's no parents around them telling them, okay, you know, sign here. It, it could be scary, but we really make the atmosphere very comfortable. If you walk around in an area where there's a bunch of teens hanging out, no one's going to expect that any of them have a sexually transmitted disease. It's not something you see in their face, but one in ten teenage girls who are sexually active will have chlamydia. So if there's some place out there where you can find information um, about sexually transmitted diseases, how to prevent them and how to cure them or how to treat them, then that's where the clinic comes in and can give that advice. Do you see more girls or guys? In an average, we see more girls than guys. Both men and women come to the emergency room because they're usually coming in when they have painful um, lesions or discharge or actually having symptoms. How are STDs passed from one person to another? It's basically physical contact and um, oral intercourse, vaginal intercourse, anal. You might not even have intercourse, but if you have an open sore and the person that's infected that has, um, and you come in contact, you know, there's a possible opening that you'll get. A lot of sexual contact occurs outside of the use of the condom. You can get many of these things, including warts, gonorrhea, chlamydia, and other things in your mouth and all those contacts can cause the transmission of a sexually transmitted disease. Condoms most of the time are not used effectively for either pregnancy prevention and especially for STD prevention. If teens come in and they don't have insurance, what can they do to be seen? We don't accept insurance, so we can still um, give them the services they need. Are STDs curable? Okay, an example of an STB, STD being cured is uh, general warts, actually. There's non-curable and there's curable. The warts are treated 
or removed by several ways. One of them is by using a chemical and one of them is an acid. It's burned off, it's touched to the skin and it does hurt and then the warts will be affected by the burn and eventually go away. But that is not one treatment of the burn but several over weeks. And if you do have an outbreak of a wart you can freeze them off. Um, it, they also can be cut off by uh, electrocautery. It's a it's actually taking a very, very hot loop and incising the wart off the skin. The virus that causes warts never goes away and you can get treated for the warts and then have the warts again from the first occurrence of being exposed to that virus. Of course there's bacterial diseases that can cause cured by antibiotics. If you take them in time and you take them appropriately you can cure an STD that's a bacteria by an antibiotic. But many, many teens don't get treated at all and they become even worse infections like a pelvic inflammatory disease and can cause scarring. So the biggest thing is prevention because no, they're not curable, so you want to prevent STDs. And the most important way to prevent is, uh, STDs is by postponing sex. Thank you, Dr. Newman, and thank you, Rave Carrillo, for sharing your knowledge with us. We have learned a lot today, and I hope you have too. So our last question is, where do you get your information about sex? Today we're here with the Teens in Action group. We're going to be talking about the way the media influences teens. So how do you feel the media influences the way the teens think today? Um, I think many people focus on the bad things that media might portray, but I think there's a lot of good things also. Um, like MTV has a lot of good commercials about protecting yourself and getting tested and stuff that's really important that teens may overlook these days. So I think that the media does both good and bad things. The way the media influences uh, sex is by how the actresses and actors act in the movies and the words in the music, how, how the, the musicians play and sing. The media today has taken a big rapid change. It's everything's become more sexual. Um, the skirts are getting shorter, there's more sexual scenes in movies and teens watch all of this because it's their form of entertainment so um, they're influenced by what they see. I think that that's the only way now that that's the only way they're selling anything they're just using sex as a sale and like even in music videos the only thing they ever have on it is like sex. Teens go out and and they're just trying to have fun but they don't realize that companies are just trying to sell condoms or whatever um, the product is. I think media has a lot to do with the influencing teens, but I think that peers also um, bring media to rise because if one person in your school or around you is doing something another idol is doing, like a movie star or something, they're going to follow it so the trend is going to keep going on. I think another form of media that affects teens a lot is reality shows. Um, they like basically reality shows are like really like raunchy and like all these like dating shows like Alima Date and all these things. Um, they really don't display anything. They're like the dating image they changed it so much and so like boyfriend girlfriend you know it has to, you know boyfriend and girlfriend you know they must sleep with each other. I mean that's just the way they're making it. I think video games are getting a little sexual too, like The Sims or something because. Even even if they rated mature, not only do teens play, but also kids try try those games out. Do you guys feel that there's any way to help prevent it from getting worse? There is a way to prevent it from getting worse by by not influencing it through the media anymore. Influencing it through the media also makes it worse by teens like to copy what they what they see. Monkey see, monkey do. Um, I think that. That could be possible if people just don't go with the flow. Um, I think that although many people might say that there are ways to prevent the media portraying sex that way, I think the reality is that um, sex sells, and I don't, and sex is gonna sell. So I don't think it's gonna change necessarily, and I don't think there might be ways that we can prevent that. I think that parents have to stop it as well because if you don't stop it in the home, it's just gonna keep going 
and it's not just the media, it starts the home too. Unfortunately, um, sex will just sell just like she said and there's just no way we can stop it because people will just keep buying and buying and just keep watching and doing or whatever it is and we just can't do anything about that. If role models um, and stars can take more of a conservative role than what they display to the media, maybe they're um, fans would also follow in their footsteps. Thank you guys for your comments and your time. And we hope you trust yourself and go with your beliefs before you follow the media. Did you know you can get a sexually transmitted disease without having intercourse? How many high school students will have an STD by the time they graduate? Stay tuned and find out. They're calling about the AIDS crisis? Tell them we're not interested. Come on. Hi. What? What? So, you know that you can get an STD without having intercourse. How many high school students do you think will have an STD by the time they graduate? One out of every three high school students who is sexually active will have an STD by the time they graduate. Welcome back to Teens in Action. Here are some places where you can get additional information about our topic. So grab a pen and paper and get ready to write down some information. You're in charge of your own life. Don't let anyone pressure you into having any kind of sex. You can always say no, even if you've said yes before. Guys, having sex doesn't make you a man. Being responsible does. Girls, if sex is the price to keep a boyfriend, he's not worth the risk. And here are some websites, sxetc.org, a website created by teens for teens, teensource.org, a great source for information, teenwire.com, committed to giving you facts, greattowait.com, information about why you should wait, teen411.com, a website created by the Valley Teen Clinic. Thank you for joining us. We hope this show gave you something to think about, and please know that there's always someone you can talk to. There are a lot of teens who put this show together. As the credits roll, you will see some of what the members of Teens in Action did behind the scenes to create this show. We'll see you next time on Teens in Action. Bye.
all the places you could throw something out, a trash can works best. Because everything that's thrown in the street can wash down storm drains and end up in the ocean. So keep our neighborhoods and beaches clean. Can it? To talk trash, call 1-888-CLEAN-OA.